We are so grateful to have you with us for this hour-long special and all hour long. I want to let you know we're going to be showcasing the faces and the age progressions of missing children at the bottom of your screen. That's what you're going to see. And so whatever you're doing, please take a look at your screen if you're just listening to us in the background. Because if you recognize a face, please call the tip line. I mean, you could be their hero today. There is always hope. And one person who knows that is Maureen Pierce. She was snatched by a stranger when she was just eight years old, but lived to tell about it. And this is what it's like to be kidnapped. I was at a park with my mom and a friend playing, and it was broad daylight. My mom was there just reading her book on the park bench, was going to pick my mom flowers. And as I was bent over doing that, a man um, approached me. He covered my mouth and said, "and said, don't you know? Don't scream! Don't yell! Or I'll kill you." He grabbed me then and took me to the car. I started thinking, should I jump out? Is he gonna? Is he gonna kill me? Am I ever gonna see my mom again? We got out of the car, and I mean, he you know said he would he would threaten me. So it was very it was scary. It was you know come you I had to go in the cornfield with him and and. That's when um, he just... He assaulted you. So I asked him once, um, are you going to kill me? And he said, when I'm done with you. He went to the car a couple times and would say, you know, don't move, stay there. Maureen did stay there the first time, but when he got up and left again, her instinct kicked in and she ran. I just remember kind of getting to the side of the road and waving down a car. Police caught Michael Kneipp, and Maureen had to go identify him in a lineup. I just remember the curtain opening, and there he was, number four, and I knew right away. Do you recognize now that by running, you saved yourself? I do. As a parent now, I do want for kids to be able to let them know right away that they can trust that gut instinct. We are so grateful you're here to talk about yeah. this. Because seeing that is, I mean, what's it like for you, first of all, to see it? It's, it's difficult. Again. I think the uh, hardest part is seeing his picture again, because I didn't think I'd see him again, because that was a later mug shot. Mm -hmm. but I noticed you looked down when it came up in the screen. Are you all right? I am. All right, OK, good, just making sure. Um, you ran. You had that. How did you know? I think this is what we, we want to know, how to make sure our kids understand that it's okay to run. Right. Right? It, right. Absolutely. And initially, I didn't, though. As, as you know, there were questions, and I, all these questions going through my mind of what I should do. And I didn't initially react, even though the questions were coming through my head and the instinct was kicking in. I didn't know what to do with it. But I did at one point move. I think of it more as just I got up and moved when I was told not to at one point, even though other times I did and I thought, I, I, gotta, I have to do something, I have to move, I have to get out of here. Was it, was it instinctual or was it something you really thought about? I, it was, I think, instinct initially that was um, something bad was gonna happen and what am I gonna do? And initially I listened to his threats. You believe him as a child, don't do this or I'll kill you, don't move. And then I think it was, I thought about it, on, Personally, I prayed, and I just felt like I got this voice that said, move, do something. And you moved. All righty. And you have four kids now that you're teaching that to. We're yes. going to talk about that okay. coming up, but we're so grateful you're here, Maureen. Thank you.